Today is June 8th of 2020, which means that it's been a little bit over four years since I've built this little guy. So this is a long life blinking jewel thief circuit. And when I built this, my primary goal for it was to see just how long one battery could just sit here and blink this little LED. And the main thing I wanna do in this video is just check the voltage of the battery on here. I do a video on this once a year just to see how this thing's doing. And according to this meter, we are at, maybe if I can get the probes on here, 1.381 volts. Yeah, 1.381. And just to verify it here, I'll bring another meter in. I have not used this meter in a, a very long time, so I do wanna check it against a different one just to make sure we get a similar result. Yep, this meter's reading 1.380, so. Almost exactly the same. I really don't even use this multimeter anymore except for to check this because it's one of the really cheap $10 ones. And you know, since I've built this, I've gotten better multimeters in this guy. So tend not to use that one anymore. So if you look at the trend of the voltage here, originally we started out at exactly 1.6 volts. And then after six months, it dropped to 1.526. Then after another six months, it dropped to almost exactly 1.5 volts. And then after a whole year, the rest of these are uh, one year increments. So it's only dropped by three hundredths of a volt. And then it dropped by, what was that? About five hundredths of a volt there. Actually not even that much, maybe four hundredths. And this time we dropped, well, about another five hundredths or so. So at this point, it looks like we're dropping approximately 50 millivolts per year, which if we can continue to do that all the way to the point where our battery only has uh, you know, 0.8 volts left in it, it's got a very long time left to go. Now, one thing that is a concern of mine is that this battery has an expiration date of March of 2023, you're sorry, not March of 2023, December of 2023 which means that the battery or the battery shelf life will be used up within the next three and a half years. And if the voltage keeps trending the way that it is right now, this thing should last quite a bit longer than three and a half years. Now the average amount of current that this circuit takes is quite low because of course it's blinking like this, but it does take one little spike of current every time it flashes. I don't remember exactly how much current it was. I think in my original build videos, I uh, may have measured that. But anyway, uh, I do have two of these. Now the unfortunate, well, there's, there's several unfortunate things with the second one. One of them is I don't actually remember when I built this thing. I believe that it was about a year before I built this one. So this one's been going for about five years. The other unfortunate thing about this one is that the battery wasn't full to begin with. And the main reason, and if you do build one of these, you're gonna to wanna to use either a green, blue, or a white LED, or any of the, well, any LED that has a higher forward voltage. You want an LED that has a forward voltage of at least, you know, three volts, preferably. Because I used a red LED in this one, and the problem with the red LEDs is that they have a low enough forward voltage to the point where if you put in a battery with 1.6 volts in it, the LED will just light up off the power of the battery and you'll see how the schematic's set up and why it does that in a second. But uh, unfortunately, putting a fully charged battery into this circuit with the red LED, it just lit the LED all the time. You can kind of see a bright flash every once in a while as it would blink, but the LED did just stay on constantly with that circuit, so it didn't really work with the full battery. And this one has actually died once. I'm not really sure why it's blinking right now, to be completely honest. So if you measure a battery voltage, I bet it's really low, like 0.8 or maybe even less than that. Yeah, 0.842 actually. Which is kind of interesting because at one point I looked at this thing and it had stopped blinking. And I checked the battery voltage and it was all the way down at 0.6. So the fact that this battery is at 0.84 it's kind of perplexing to me because I had looked at it at one point, it stopped blinking entirely. I checked the battery voltage and it was at about 0.6. So it was too low to turn the transistor on. And of course, if you can't turn on the transistor, the circuit won't work. And then I kind of jiggled the battery a little bit and it came on again and then I just left it. So 
Right now, I don't know if it's because maybe the temperature inside here is a little bit warmer and that's bringing the battery voltage up slightly. And of course this thing really doesn't pull much current, so it can probably sit here and run off of 0.8 volts just fine for quite a while. But yeah, this one did die at one point and it somehow came back to life on the same battery. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and flip this over because this has the schematic on it. Now, if you're familiar with the Jewel Thief circuit, this is going to feel very familiar to you. So you have a, well, it's a standard Jewel Thief circuit with the exception of two things. One being the fact that there's a capacitor placed in parallel with this resistor here. And the other thing being the fact that this resistor is a higher value than what you would find on a typical Jewel Thief. Generally, a Jewel Thief will have a approximately 1K resistor here. It doesn't matter too much. Generally speaking, the lower the value of this resistor, the more current will flow through the circuit and the brighter the LED will end up being. But in this case, the way that we have this set up, we have the resistor and the capacitor that charges up across that resistor. It forms some type of RC time constant. I should probably build one of these up and just probe it out on the oscilloscope just to see what is really happening across this because I don't think I ever measured that before on one of these. But it's gotta be doing something to the effect of charging this capacitor up to a certain voltage and then at that point the transistor is able to turn on and function like a regular jewel thief for just one little blink of the LED and then it turns itself back off of course and it just repeats that cycle over and over. And if you look at this, you can see why I was having issues with this, this older one with the LED here, because if you trace this out, positive the battery goes through the coil, which is just this little hand wound uh, toroid on here. We'll go through that and then it goes straight to the LED. So this, this provides very little resistance. And then the other side, the negative of the battery is just going straight to the other side of our LED. So the LED is effectively hooked directly across our battery. Normally one and a half volts isn't enough to light up an LED, but unfortunately the red LED that I picked for this was enough to light up that LED. So I had to use a slightly dead battery. Anyway, that's what the schematic for this looks like. This little guy is still going and I will continue to just leave this guy on the refrigerator and let it continue to blink. Oh, and I did forget to mention on this guy, the LED got bent over. I assume it fell off the refrigerator at some point and uh, just got bent. And I don't really want to bend it back just in case the leads break off of it because I wouldn't want to uh, have to go and repair this thing after it's been running continuously for four years now. I do have a build video for this guy and it is a pretty old video given that it's a four year old device. It's one of my really early videos and the, uh, the lighting and the sound quality are not nearly as good as they are now. Also, I am filming this video with a different camera than what I normally do, so this video might look a little bit off as well. But, uh, but anyhow, uh, I will link that card in. It is one of my older videos though, so it's uh, not quite as good a production value as what I have now. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click on that like button. If you wanna see more videos like it, go ahead and click on the subscribe button down below. And if you have any comments or if you've built one of these up since the last video that I've made, go ahead and leave that information down below and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.